What's up guys, Doug Polk here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a hand that I played from Poker After Dark against Jason Kuhn. Let's go ahead and jump into the action. Sometimes it is too late. <laughs> Doug Polk, a definite do-gooder, back on June like, 3rd. Take a breather. He tweeted that he would give away 2% of okay. his World yeah, Series of Poker Profit, including <laughs> the one Old drop man Brian. in a giveaway. Oh god, I just realized I forgot to mention this. We actually have a giveaway going on right now. It's going to end on Friday. I'm giving away $14,000. If you want to enter, you can do so at the link below. I'm sorry, guys. I almost forgot. Also a chess player. Polk was playing by the age of five. And by the time he was nine, he was getting lessons from a grandmaster. So perhaps we need to s start the spinoff show, Chess After Dark, and Polk and Haxton can be our first two. By the time he was 15, he was playing Warcraft and competing in World Cyber Game tournaments as a teenager. <coughs> Competition runs deep in his blood. Our hand begins at some modest $300, $600, $1,200 blinds. And I look down at pocket sevens on the button. Obvious open. And now the action's on Jason Kuhn in the small blind. Now, this is a bit weird because you do have the three blind structure. And if you wanted to have a policy of not calling any hands in this position, I think I'd be okay with that. In general, you should be playing tight because you don't have a lot invested and you're out of position against both other blinds as well as the button. And so you should be folding most of the hands you're going to look down at in the small blind. The problem with calling is that if you do call, you risk getting squeezed by two different players behind and your odds, again, not very good pre-flop. So you should play tight and mainly three bet. With pocket threes, I think all the options are on the table. I don't really mind folding. I don't really mind calling. And I don't really mind three betting. A classic Doug situation if I've ever seen one. I would say overall, I probably like three betting the most and folding a bit more than call. But again, all work and he does decide to make the call. Both Ike and Jungle look down at some pretty garbage hands, get out of the way, and we're taking a flop heads up. Him and Kuhn, both with pocket pairs. Oh boy. The flop comes 973, which I would say is rather favorable. Jakun checks the flop as you should with all your hands, and now it's on me with my set of sevens. Now, on a board like this, it's sort of interesting because there aren't too many hands that the smallest blind can flat when they call an open. In fact, one of the problems with calling in the blinds when you do face opens, particularly in the smallest blind in a three blind structure, is your range is sort of straightforward. You're going to mainly have hands like suited broadways, maybe the occasional suited ace, and then pocket pairs. So it's easy to know what cards hit your opponent. Lower boards tend to be a bit better for the opener, and then middling boards tend to be a bit better for the flatter. Because of this, you want to pick sizes that make the most sense given your opponent's range. I decided to go ahead and bet 2600 on the flop, a very small bet of just under one third the pot. The idea is that if my opponent does have a hand like king, queen, or ace, jack, you put them in some difficult spots, they likely have to just float, but if they always call, then I can exploit them by betting thin for value. Also, when he has a hand like deuces or fours, he's going to have a tough time on some later streets. So this size is pretty good against a lot of the holdings my opponent can have. Now, you could argue to make it maybe make it slightly bigger. I think that strategy is fine, too. And you can mix it up and do some of both. But either way, when you have a set, you certainly have to be betting. Now we're to Jakun with his set. A couple options on the table. You could definitely trap and look to slow play for a later street. Or you can raise now and start to build the pot. I would say overall, I lean more towards a raise, particularly with bottom set. When you have a hand more like sevens or, or nines, I like raise a bit less because it's less likely my opponent has anything. Particularly with pocket nines, you just block so much of this board, it's a lot harder for a button to bet the flop and call raise. Now, you still can get some value from straight draws or over pairs, so there's plenty of value to be had. And if you do flop a set, your main play should be to raise. Remember this, guys, when you have a strong hand, you should mainly go for the raise and build that pot, get some value. But once in a while, throw the trap in 
and Jakun decides to set that trap. Ooh. Sorry about that. Thank you. Okay. Both players have full houses now. Doug's house is just a little bit fuller. Hope not going to pull the plug on Kuhn's ventilator just yet. The turn comes in nine, and this is where the hand starts to get very interesting. Jakun checks once again, and now I have to decide what size I want to bet with my full house. Well, in this situation, I think Jakun's mainly going to have hands like eights or sixes or over cards, so it doesn't really make sense to start going too large in this situation. Also, on the off chance my opponent does have a hand like ace nine suited, king nine suited, or ten nine suited, then yeah, I'm going to get check raised here if I bet small, which is good when you have a full house. If I have a hand like queens, I'm also going to want to bet small so I can try and get some value from those worse hands and not narrow my opponent's calling range down. Yeah, it could be great to start bombing away with sevens here to stack a set or trips, but then when my opponent has a worse hand, I don't give myself an opportunity to make some money. And I also don't allow myself opportunity to bet over pairs. I want to take a line where if I have a hand like jacks or kings, I can go for three suites of value easily, and you can do that with a smaller size. So by betting this smaller size, I allow myself room to bet thin for value and also to work in some bluffs, and then also put my sets in there to be a little tricky from time to time. Back over to Jakun, and now things are getting a little interesting. Against a bigger size, you can maybe continue to trap and go for the call, but against this small size, it does make sense to work in some check raises. You want to build this pot against over pairs. You want to maybe allow your opponent a chance to call with a hand like 10-8 when they're stone dead. You want to let your opponent, if they have trips, call you down as well, so building the pot right here is a good idea. It can also get a little more thin to raise on some rivers. Again, when you have a full house, it's probably not going to be too thin across most of them, but there are some rivers that are going to be a little less good for you than others. Anyway, he decides to check raise to 15,000. I like this size, and you might be wondering, how can I bluff here? Well, you can maybe take a hand like Jack-10 suited, or if you could call with 10 suited preflop, maybe that hand would work. And once in a while, if you really want to work in a creative bluff, take a hand that you might fold like fours or fives and check raise that as well. I don't like check raising a hand like eights. I think it's a bit too strong. You just have to call. And also, when you have a hand with an eight or a six in it, it's now much less likely that I have a straight draw. If you have fours and you check raise, I can't. you don't block hands like 8-6 suited or 10-8 suited or 10-6 suited, hands that will definitely raise, the, raise preflop, bet the flop, and look to bet some turns. So I think maybe taking one of those hands and blocking from time to time can be good as well. Now, back over to me with my pocket sevens. What should I do? Should I fast play now and get some value or should I trap? I think generally speaking, when you're in position and your opponent is repre representing a pretty polarized range, he's basically saying he either has a nine or better or he's bluffing. I think you want to call and like to play some later streets. One of the best things about being in position in spots like this is that, you know, when, my, when I do have the better hand, I'm going to get a chance to value bet anyway. And if he's bluffing, he's stone dead. So you want to let your opponent have room to make moves if they are bluffing by calling in position and using that position to try and outplay your opponent on later streets, get some value when they are bluffing. And then when you do have them beat, you can put in a river raise anyway and look to go for some stacks. Anyway, I make the call and let's take a river. Hope not going to pull the plug on Kuhn's ventilator just yet. Four. 
Well, sevens are not the nuts. It would take quad nines or king nine or king's full for Polk to be beat at this point. Fucking full house. Since it is Rumble with Jungle Week, I believe Tarzan said it best. The river comes a king, which all in all is a pretty good card. There's some chance that my opponent might have king nine suited, but not too likely compared to him having a bluff or a set or ace nine suited or ten nine suited. I think it's a bit less likely. Also worth noting that the king is a heart, which means there's only one combination of king nine suited left in the deck. I know you guys don't like when I get too into card removal, but it's an important thing to think about. In order for him to have king nine, it has to be exactly king nine of spades. The first question that Jakun has to ask himself here on the river is what size does he want to bet? And I can see some different options. One of the problems with starting to go too big is that I can call you with a range that has a lot of trips in it. And if it starts to get to that point, then yes, it's great when you have a set and you get more value, but then that size becomes pretty bad as a bluff. If I have a nine in this spot, I'm not gonna fold even to some very large sizes. So going with a big size is not exactly great in spots with a lot of card removal. In general, on paired boards, you want to pick smaller sizes because when you don't have a nine, your opponent's twice as likely to have one. And while that's good when you have a set, it's bad when you're bluffing, and you want to pick a size that makes sense for both occasions. So Jakun decides to bet 54,000, a little bit larger than I'd like to see, but obviously completely fine. The action's now over to me, and I want him to think that I'm pondering a call, but I'm really just thinking about Vegas and the fucking Mirage. I want him to think that I'm pondering a call but all I'm really thinking about is Vegas and the fucking Mirage. Now, even though there are a couple of hands that have me beat, the one combo of King-9 suited, the one combo of nines, the one combo of 9-7 suited, you're gonna have to take some risks here and go for the raise because it's not too likely that your opponent has you beat. There are three combos of pocket threes. You could also have ace-9 suited or 10-9 suited or maybe 9-8 suited. So there are way too many hands to get value from this simply call. We're gonna have to go for a raise. The question is, what is the best size to go? And I think I like something that's right around pot. Now you might want to argue for a bit of a bigger size because we are saying that we have uh, somewhere between a, a decent boat or better. And so we should go, should go a bigger size here to try and stack hands like three, three or seven, seven, because those hands would not be good against what our value range is. Our value range, of course, is gonna have hands like Kings or King nine or nine, seven or nine, three suited. So there are certainly plenty of hands that can have those sets beat and sevens will be the lowest hand that we're looking to value it. The problem is if we start to go too big, it gets to be a lot worse to bluff because of the way card removal works in these situations. Now, if you're familiar with my videos, you'll know the bigger the size we go, the more that we get to bluff. However, on boards that have severe card removal effects, we wanna pick those smaller sizes. Now, in this situation, I think I like a pot-sized raise, which is why I decided to go for bumping it up to $212,000. My opponent's gonna be getting almost exactly two to one. And in general, when you do bet or raise on later streets, you wanna give them right about that size raise. You could argue to go a little bit smaller. I think that that's completely fine. And in spots where your opponent is much more likely to be capped, bigger sizes make sense. But in spots like this, even though my opponent cannot have kings, that hand's gonna be re-raising preflop, he can have all the other strong hands that I can have too. So it doesn't really, it doesn't really make sense to me to go too much of a bigger size than the one that I picked. Back over to Jason Kuhn, and this is kind of an interesting spot. There is one thing that's kind of cool to think about. When I make this raise in the river, I'm essentially saying that I have a full house, and not even just any full house, but a middling full house or better. 
Now, it's actually kind of crazy, but if my opponent, if Jakun in this spot has a nine in his hand, it's actually better than pocket threes. Because some of the hands I'm going to raise for value in the server are king nine. I'm going to be opening the offsuit version of that preflop. Nine seven suited, nine three suited, uh, you know, pocket nines. Those are all hands I'm definitely going to be betting and look or uh, raising on the river, looking to try and stack my opponent. But when you have threes, you actually don't really block any value hands other than 9-3 suited, which is not very likely, particularly because 9-3 of clubs isn't possible. You only block one combo. So what? why is it important for us to not block threes? Well, if I was bluffing in this spot, a hand I might strongly consider using is a hand like 7-3 suited. If I had 7-3 suited, I'd likely check back the turn. But if I did decide to bet that small bet on the turn, I'm going to be looking to make this move on the river. I block a set of 7s. I block a set of 3s. I block 9-7 suited. I would have great removal to make that play. He doesn't actually block any of my value hands when I raise in the river. In fact, if he has ace-9 suited, he's in a much better place than pocket 3s because he blocks king-9 suited, 9-7 suited, 9-9. But I'm not going to be making this play on the river with pocket 3s. So bottom boat and trips are actually roughly the same in terms of value because they both lose to my value range and beat my bluffs. Because of this, it is better to call a trip than it is with a full house. Now, most people have just a, if you, if you got me, you got me approach, but some really great players might be able to lay this one down. Doug, you're not the guy to fold full houses to, man. Oh. Code escapes. Threes? Yeah. I had you beat. That's what I did. just stone wide. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I've been so no, honest with him every hand this week. There were people, there were people I would lie to, and, and Jakun's not, not one of them. Yeah, it's hard to lie to lying is Jakun. You cold hard. Wow. It's just like lying knowing Damn. that we'll see it in 30 minutes. It's like. Thank you for joining me today for Poker Hands. If you want to enter the giveaway for $14,000, yes, that's correct. I'm giving it away. The link is in the description below, and we're going to be doing the drawing on Friday.